there are multiple different ways for you to be able to create masks inside of perfect layers. On the right hand side of my screen in my layer stack, there are two layers. On top is my New Zealand landscape. This is the image that you're looking at right now, and it's got a really boring sky behind the subject. At the bottom of my layer stack is a layer called New Sky. This is the one I want to use to replace my boring sky. So if I turn my New Zealand landscape layer off, you'll be able to see that this is the sky that we'll be working with. Now what I need to do is mask out or remove the boring sky to reveal the one underneath. On the left hand side of the screen in my tool well, there are lots of different tools that you can use to create a mask. The first that we're going to be using is our basic masking brush, which I've selected on the left. Up in the tool options bar, you can make changes to your brush. The most important being the mode drop down menu. This is whether you want to paint out or remove this sky, or if I open this up, if I make any mistakes, I can paint back in an area that I may have accidentally removed. You can also change things like the size, the feathering, and the opacity of this brush. And if you open up the gear icon in the center of the tool options bar, you can also select our perfect brush or edge detection tool. And we'll be talking about that option a little bit later. Now, all I need to do is click and drag over my image and it will reveal the new sky underneath. Now this basic masking brush is not great for intricate areas, for example, around the edge of the rock at the bottom of the screen. What I want to use is something that will get closer into all of those little crevices. So let's go ahead and undo that by pressing Ctrl or Command Z and move on to the next tool called the Quick Mask tool. Right underneath the masking brush, I'll go ahead and select it. Up in the tool options bar, the most important option is going to be making sure that your mode is set to paint out. We want to paint out and remove the bad sky. Then all I need to do is click and drag over a general area that I want to get rid of. So for this image, I'm going to click and drag. I don't need to be intricate here because it's going to do all the work for me. It's going to take a look at all the colors I'm selecting with this red brush that I've painted over my background. I'm going to make sure to avoid the foreground so I haven't painted over the subject or the rock. I'm going to let go and it's going to remove as much of that background as it possibly can. You'll see there are a couple of little holes like in between her legs and in between her arms where she's holding the camera, and we're gonna go in and remove those later, but I wanted to show you how fast and easy it is to use this quick mask tool. Up in the tool options bar, you can also select the box mode of the quick mask tool, and I really like this option. I'm not gonna use it for this image, but I wanna make sure that I point it out. If you select it right up here at the top, you can click and drag a box around the subject in your image, and it will remove as much of the background around the subject as possible. This won't work quite as well for this photo. The original Quick Mask tool worked great, but you always have that option up there if you'd like it. Now what we need to do is refine the mask that we've just created, and there are lots of different ways that we can do that. First, I highly suggest you zoom in. I'm going to press Control or Command Plus on my keyboard to get a little bit closer so that we can really take a look at the edge of the mask we're working with. And we're going to focus on this area right here. Now the first refinement tool that is actually extremely useful is going to be your masking brush, which I showed you earlier. I'll select it on the left but I'm going to use the perfect brush option by going up to the tool options bar clicking on the gear icon, and selecting Perfect Brush. Now what the Perfect Brush does is it bases information off of color and tones in your image and only removes those. So when I take this brush and I click, for instance, in between her two legs here, as long as the minus sign in the center of the brush is over the area that I want to remove, I'll go ahead and click and you'll see even though a huge part of this brush is over her jeans, it's only removing the sky that I don't want and leaving everything else alone. You'll also see that it's removing this little tiny area in between her foot and the rock. If I click in there, I can make sure that I get all of it and it's not removing anything else. This tool is extremely useful and it gets nice up and close to the edge of a mask. 
I'm gonna use this tool also right here in between her arms to make sure I get rid of that. And I can use it to kind of start cleaning up some of the edges around here as well. So there are lots of different uses for this perfect brush. Now the other refinement tools that you have are also extremely useful. The first being the refine brush on the left hand side, which we'll select. Up in the tool options bar, you can change the mode. I highly suggest you leave it at paint out because we want to paint out as many pixels as possible around the edge. You can see that there's still some lingering gray sky around the edge of our subject and the rock. You can also select the auto option. The quick mask tool removed a little too much and you know that it's going to need to paint in and out at the same time. You can use that as well, but we'll stick with paint out. Now I just take my brush I'm going to size it down a little bit because I want to get close in around the edge of the subject's face. So we'll take the size and just shrink it down a little bit. And then I'm going to click and drag around the edge that I want to refine. It'll go through and remove as much of that bad gray background as possible. And I can use this around all of the edges of my subject. So let's get rid of as much of that bad sky as possible. I could use this around the edge of the rock here on the left hand side. It's going to clean up some of those edges again. Now along with the refine brush, there's also the chisel tool and the blur tool. Now the chisel tool is great. If I zoom in even closer here, you're going to see that there's still this lingering little line of pixels and it's going to drive me crazy if we leave it there. It's a really easy way to tell that someone didn't pay close attention to their mask. By selecting the chisel tool, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to chisel away a layer of pixels around my mask edge. You can control the amount that it's going to remove using the amount slider here. I'll leave it at 10, but you can change this depending on your image. You can also select whether you want to remove or add pixels back in. So if you accidentally remove too much, you can add them back in later. Now all I do is click and drag and you'll see those pixels disappear. Now again, if this was too much, you can press Control or Command Z to undo and you can go through and you can change that amount. This was way too much. I only need to remove a couple of pixels around that edge. So I'm going to drop this all the way down to three and I'm going to click and that is so much better. Now the mask is going to blend a lot easier with our new background. You can also double click the chisel tool and it will go through and it will remove that amount of pixels around the entire mask edge. So I'll just double click goes through and removes those without me having to manually go in and do it. Now the last tool that we have is going to be our blur tool and I want to show you a great area of where that's going to be useful. The edge of the hills in the background of this photo were masked pretty well, but they're not blending with the new background as well as I want them to. Instead of going through and trying to remove the edges and refine how it looks, I want to blur it out just a little bit so that that blending process is easier. I'll take the blur tool on the left hand side. You can control the amount by going up to the tool options bar. I'm going to lower this down from 30 to about 20 or 15. I don't want to go too much. And then I'll just click and drag around the edge of those hills. Now they're going to blend so much nicer because they've been blurred just a little bit and it doesn't look quite as harsh. I really like to use the blur tool, especially in backgrounds like this one. Now I'm going to zoom back out. The last thing that I want to make sure I mention about working with masks is that you can take a look at your mask by going down to the bottom left hand corner of your preview and clicking the circle icon. When I click this, it will show me a black and white view of the mask itself. Anywhere that's black is somewhere we've removed and anywhere that's white is somewhere that we've kept. If you go up to the mask drop down menu, you can invert this mask. You can reset it and start from scratch. You can copy it and use it later here inside Perfect Layers. And then one of the other really great options is if you go to your view menu, you can also change how you look at this mask view mode. If I scroll down and select mask view mode, right now it's set to grayscale, meaning black and white. If I go to red overlay, now I can still see my image. It's not quite as graphic as the last option. Anywhere that's red is somewhere that I've removed and anywhere that I can clearly see is being left alone. 
To turn this mask view mode off, just go down to the bottom of your screen and click that icon one more time. Once you're done with all of your masking preferences, you can continue editing your photo from here, or you can save your photo and export it.